Greetings from Williamsburg and good morning, afternoon, or evening from wherever you're joining us around the world. Welcome to all of our Tribe family members. We're delighted to have you with us today for this very special occasion. I'm Marilyn Midyet and as CEO of your William & Mary Alumni Association, I'd like to thank our terrific Board of Directors for hosting this event. Although it looks a bit different this year, I'm so thankful for this opportunity for all of us to gather online to honor our exceptional 2021 Alumni Medallion recipients. Charter Day weekend is off to a tremendous start already and I hope everyone had an opportunity to watch the ceremony on Thursday and to wish William and Mary a happy 328th birthday. In this challenging time, it's more important than ever that we continue to celebrate our traditions together as a community. Established in 1934, the Alumni Medallion is the highest award alumni of William & Mary can receive. Today's presentation continues our proud tradition of honoring alumni for their professional achievement, service to their communities, state, and our nation, as well as exceptional dedication and devotion to William & Mary. Now, I'm pleased to introduce Robert M. Gates, a member of the class of 1965 and our university's chancellor for a second term. Bob's stellar career includes 27 years working at the CIA before becoming Secretary of Defense in 2006. He's worked under eight presidents of both parties, ably and thoughtfully. Upon his retirement, he received the Presidential Medal of Freedom. He is also an accomplished writer and author of several books, and in 2000, he received this very award, our Alumni Medallion. Please join me in welcoming Chancellor Robert Gates. This is the 10th Alumni Medallion ceremony I have attended. Nine as Chancellor and one as recipient in 2000. William & Mary, this community of learning, listening, and working through issues, rooted in the original soil and the basic principles of American liberty, has a special role and a special obligation to be part of the solutions to our nation's challenges. It's heartening each year to find more solution finders who call William and Mary home. Since 1934, the association has awarded 313 alumni medallions, recognizing some of the most distinguished graduates in our history. Today, we add four more to that number. Among the distinctions of the Alumni Medal, it's one of the few William & Mary honors that Thomas Jefferson never received. Sharon, Sue, Bob, and B, we honor your devotion and love for alma mater. Well done and well deserved. Thank you, Chancellor Gates, and thank you to everyone who is with us online this afternoon. As president of the William & Mary Alumni Association, it is my privilege and pleasure to join Marilyn in welcoming you to this event. This is a celebration that brings together the finest of the William & Mary community. Alumni, students, faculty, staff, parents, and friends. We are especially honored today that many of our recipients' family members are with us virtually. For more than three and a quarter centuries, William & Mary alumni have impacted their communities and the world, and they continue to do so every day. The four we honor today are among our university's most dedicated and accomplished alumni. B. McLeod, class of 1983, and MBA, class of 1991. Sharon Philpott, class of 1985. Bob Trice, class of 1968 and Sue Warner, class of 1964. Our happiness is tinged with sadness this morning as we remember B, and I dearly wish she could have been here with us as we celebrate her life and many accomplishments. She shines bright in our memories and in the lives of those she touched, and I'm grateful that her husband, Goody Tyler, could accept her award for her today. I'm so proud to award these medallions to B, Sharon, Bob, and Sue. 
They have demonstrated a love of William and Mary and their communities in countless ways. They are active participants in the life of the university, giving of their time, talent, and treasure to their alma mater, investing in the success of our students, faculty, and fellow alumni. Their creative energy, commitment, and guiding values inspire all of us, and we thank them for their leadership and for helping shape William and Mary. We have prepared video introductions about each of our recipients and their achievements, featuring words from those who know each of them well. We greatly appreciate the efforts of these friends, as well as all the hard work of those who contributed to making this celebration possible as we honor these exceptional alumni. First, we would like to honor Sue Warner, class of 1964. Sue is infallibly elegant, but she's also invariably warm and human, and most of all, she's so interested in everybody else. Sue is incredibly kind, and I would say fiercely loyal to Alma Mater and to her friends and to her family. Uh, anyone who gets to know Sue is adding an incredible and admirable person to their friend group. Sue and I first met in 2006, shortly after she became a major gifts officer for the College of William & Mary. We started going to lunch and sometimes out to dinner, and I thought that our relationship was pure friendship. However, after a short period of time, she started reaching underneath the table and pulling up hidden green and gold folders with wonderful ideas for how I might give William & Mary. She had been an elementary education major when she was here, and she started as a preschool teacher when her own children were little. And then she migrated to elementary school, and she was very talented, and it was recognized right away. Eventually, Sue became one of the county's great gurus of gifted and talented education. The county then pushed her further and asked her to be the principal of a school that needed a bit of a shake-up. She got the school turned around, but then I think she decided that it was time to move on, and so she and a friend started a consulting firm, the Lead Alliance, and they would offer their services to corporations, nonprofits. She's had quite a career before she ever started her job at William & Mary, which she had been doing, by the way, for nothing for a long time. <laughs> Sue has a deep and abiding love for the college. It has been said that green and gold blood runs through her veins. She served as chair of the William & Mary Fund, which is now the annual giving fund. She served on the board of the Greater Metro DC Alumni Association. She chaired the first ever DC auction to support the college. She's chaired her class reunion. She was deeply involved in the creation and formation of the Society of 1918 and she was very involved in the expansion of the Alumni House. Her daughter Megan told me, whatever time Sue had outside of raising two children and working full time was spent on William and Mary. Well, Sue serves the community in a lot of ways, but two that come specifically to mind are her service on the volunteer board of the Bruton Parish Church and her time as the housing board chair of the Pi Phi Sorority. So Sue has been going to Bruton Parish Church for many years, but in recent years, Sue has also gotten involved with their volunteer board, where she brings some of her expertise in planning and staffing events of the church. I think Sue's had an incredible impact on Bruton Parish Church. I learned after the fact that Sue was presented with the Algernon Sidney Sullivan Award when she graduated. And it's for qualities of heart, mind, and helpfulness to others. And I just think that that is Sue, and that that award was true then, and it's true now. 
Sue, congratulations on the unbelievable recognition as a recipient of the Alumni Medallion. I cannot think of someone who is better deserving of this commendation. I have been blessed to be a friend of yours over the last few years and to have gotten to know you, but I recognize that I am just one person who is positively impacted because of your presence in their life. Thank you so much for being an incredible example of how to have a lifelong relationship with William and Mary, and congratulations again. Congratulations, Sue. I am so thrilled that you have received the highest honor bestowed upon an alum by our beloved alma mater. You deserve every bit of love and adoration. Congratulations, Sue. So Sue, old friend and loyal William and Mary alum, I am so thrilled that you are receiving this award it could not be going to a more deserving person, so congratulations to you. Greetings, President Rowe, Executive Director Midyet, the Alumni Association Board, my family viewing from afar, fellow medallion recipients, alumni, faculty, staff, and students. I hope you'll forgive me if I indulge in one more pinch me exercise. I can't believe I'm standing here about to receive an alumni medallion. For a long time, I've watched these ceremonies and been in awe of the recipients and the high bar they set for the difference that they make at William & Mary, their professional lives and their community lives. I am deeply humbled to be in their midst. My thanks go, first of all, to my husband, Ray, frequently at my side, regularly cheering me on through all of my William and Mary experiences. He managed to keep a secret for well over a year, and within our family structure, he's not known as the secret keeper because of his very expressive, extroverted, and outgoing personality. Thank you, Ray. My thanks go also to the nominating committee, spearheaded by Donnie Wintermute, who corralled Joyce Shields, Terry Thompson, and even former President Taylor Reevely into writing nomination letters for me. Awesome. Thank you to the Alumni Association Board for selecting me. And thank you to my advocates who spoke in the video, Donnie, Stuart Dopp, my freshman Ludwell RA, or dorm counselor as we called them then, and Caleb Rogers, 2020 graduate, who was our adopted Canterbarian through the Bruton Parish Church program. Also, and not because they're not last, but because they're so important to me, my fellow colleagues in university advancement who, working remotely, managed to put together all of these many and moving pieces and pull a ceremony together. Thank you, deeply thank you. My love affair with William & Mary really began in the middle of my seventh grade year when my family came down and visited campus while going to Newport News to see my grandparents and say goodbye before heading to Germany. I decided then and there, I wanted to come to William and Mary. No matter where our military family, Air Force family was located, I wanted to be at William and Mary. By the time I came, I had been in 13 schools, including three high schools. I'd never been anywhere for four complete years, as was going to un unroll for me at William & Mary. It's just been a joy to be affiliated with William & Mary in every aspect of my life since then. My Air Force daughter life allowed me to learn several things of importance, to manage change, to be resilient, to make friends quickly, to welcome newcomers, even how to pack all of my belongings in a footlocker. William & Mary taught me to engage in critical and analytical thinking, taught me also 
how to love a person, my husband, and a place of belonging, William & Mary. I'm so proud of the way our administration, faculty, staff, and students have handled the current COVID crisis. I'm just so proud to be an alumna of William & Mary. And I am humbled beyond measure to be receiving the alumni medallion. Please stay well, stay connected, stay resolute in adhering to COVID health protocols so that we can be together again before long. Thank you. So we are grateful for your leadership. Thank you for your service to your fellow alumni and to William & Mary. Next, we have a tribute to Bob Trice, class of 1968. Oftentimes you get in conversations with people and they quickly want to let you know how much they know. And that is not Bob Trice. Bob is patient. He asks more questions than he answers. Uh, but you know, the other things I think about when I think of Bob relate far more to collaboration, generosity, and cooperation. Well, the best description for Bob is um, uh, all have to do with the qualities of his thinking. He's judicious and he's intelligent. Uh, but also he's kind, he's a real gentleman, and he's, he's just pleasant to be around. He has this quiet, unassuming uh, uh, character and graceful way that is, uh, is both appreciated and, and effective. And I consider him to be a mentor, not only for those uh, reasons, but also the fact that he's a model of integrity. Bob went to graduate school to get a PhD studying political science, U.S. foreign policy, and international relations at the University of Wisconsin. And he was very successful. And he was hired by a top 10 uh, political science program, Ohio State. And he was an assistant professor working on arms transfers and U.S. foreign policy and national security policy when he got a call. His country asked him to come and serve in the Defense Department. He served, I think, three or four years in the Department of Defense, and then he shifted over from the executive branch to the legislative branch, where he served in the Senate on Capitol Hill. So he's seen the academic side of IR, the executive branch, and the legislative branch. And after a successful career as a policy practitioner, he went into the private sector. I think Bob is, is most well known for his work in the defense industry. I've known Bob since the, uh, the mid 90s when I came to work at Lockheed Martin. To work with him was to work with a, a real pro and a man who functioned at a very high level as, uh, as an intellect, as a businessman, uh, even though it wasn't his job as an ethicist. He was always very ethical in the way he wanted to uh, proceed. And it, just a wonderful example to, to pattern yourself after as a business person. I think Bob uh, has a passion for the sustainability of the planet. Bob's been with the Nature Conservancy for 15 years or more, uh, and that whole time he has served on our board. Bob is, is very committed to helping others. You know, I know he's provided donations not only to the Nature Conservancy, but but also to uh, a group called Anera, uh, who uh, provides refugee assistance and aid. One of the motives for Bob has to be the continued internationalization of William and Mary. Bob and Susan have made gifts to William and Mary that will support international programs and student faculty research programs for all time coming. But in addition to the generous support they've offered to the Public Policy Program and the Global Research Institute, Bob has also gotten down in the trenches and has worked directly with faculty and with students on research projects. Uh, he's visited classes. He's continued to teach, even though his career as an academic ended long ago. I think any institution would be proud to have an alumnus like Bob, to have that person recognized as an alumnus and held up as an example for, uh, you know, William & Mary education can help launch. Bob, you know that uh, I've always been very fond of you and uh, you have uh, both enriched uh, my 
my, my life uh, personally, but also professionally through your service with the Nature Conservancy. So I just wanted to uh, sincerely congratulate you for uh, receiving this uh, prestigious alumni award from William and Mary. Uh, congratulations, it's so well deserved and uh, look forward to celebrating with you. Congratulations, Bob. I can't think of anyone more deserving of this honor. Thanks for all that you do for William and Mary. I wanna congratulate you on this very distinguished award. I know it means a lot to you because William and Mary means a great deal to you. And you mean a great deal to me. You've been a friend, you've been a boss, you've been a colleague, you've been a confidant, you've been an advisor, and you've excelled in all those roles. And uh, I hope that you enjoy this distinction because uh, in my humble opinion, you richly deserve it. Congratulations, old friend. I'm deeply honored to receive this medallion and particularly want to thank the Alumni Association, President Rowe and Chancellor Gates, and to congratulate my fellow recipients. I knew I wanted to come to William & Mary the very first time I set foot on campus as a high school half miler at the state track championships in 1961. The physical beauty of the place and the eagerness and warmth of the students I interacted with sold me. Looking back over the last 60 years only reaffirms that this is one of the earliest and best big decisions I ever made. Not only did the college teach me how to read, write, speak, and think critically at competitive levels, but the faculty, administrators, and fellow students reinforced over and over again the enduring values of honor, tradition, hard work, and mutual trust and respect. These are lessons I've repeatedly been able to rely on over a long and widely varied, some would say checkered, career. But William & Mary played an equally important but very different role in those formative years because it was where I met, fell in love with, and married Susan Salmon in the Wren Chapel in 1967. Susan and I are enormously proud of how William & Mary has transformed itself over the decades since we graduated. When we were here as students, the college was a very good, very pleasant, socially conservative, Southern, essentially white, co-ed liberal arts institution run almost exclusively by middle-aged and older males. And oh, by the way, we were almost all comfortable with those attributes at the time. But look at the college in 2021 a world-class, globally-oriented, multicultural teaching and research university, firmly committed to ever-increasing diversity and inclusion, with females as president and provost, and a new female dean of arts and sciences who just replaced another outstanding woman. Well done, tribe. Personally, I've been most proud to be associated with two major efforts that have helped break down the traditional silos of academic departments to bring interdisciplinary perspectives and solutions to the most pressing problems facing our country and the planet. First through the public policy program and more recently the Global Research Institute, the college is now offering students opportunities to widen their research horizons and real world experiences in ways that were unimaginable in our day. Under the strong leadership of President Rowe and her incredible team, we will prevail through these current trials. The brightest days for the alma mater of the nation truly lie before us. Finally, a big shout out to son Rob, daughter-in-law Wendy, daughter Samantha, son-in-law John, and grandsons James and Robert. You guys are the best, and Susan and I love you very much. Thank you. Bob. We are grateful for the transformational impact you've made on this university and its alumni. Our next recipient is Sharon Philpott, class of 1985. When I think of Sharon and William and Mary, I actually think of what are my 17 favorite words of our mission, and that is people come to William and Mary wanting to understand and change the world. 
and together we do. And I think Sharon is a big part of that we. Sharon is just incredibly committed to leaving the world a better place than she found it. Sharon uh, had a really interesting career at Ernst & Young. She had energy that people hadn't seen before. And she also brought a focus on women. In 1999, she was promoted to partner at Ernst & Young and accepted a transfer to the Argentina uh, office. And she was uh, helping local Argentinian CPAs in the office with their uh, with their clients. Sometimes with clients, she had to speak Spanish. She didn't know how to speak Spanish when she went to Argentina as a new partner, so she had to learn. La Casa de Elena is an institution that was founded by a grieving husband, and he built this amazing rec center school to help the children there because his wife loved children so much. As soon as Sharon heard about it, she wanted to get involved and she volunteered to work there with with the youngsters she was interested in being able to help each one with whatever their objectives were and these were children that came from extremely extremely underprivileged situations she gave them the idea that with with their hard work, they could make something of themselves. They could rise above their, their circumstances. And she did inspire them to do that. A couple of them went on to college after high school. She's made a remarkable difference for Hispanic studies. Every single faculty member has had the opportunity to think in new ways about how to enhance student learning. She doesn't look to get credit for her generosity, for her efforts, she really looks to honor others. Her recent endowment, established in honor of her mother, serves students from Southwestern Virginia who might not otherwise have the opportunity to go to college. She's also made a huge difference through her leadership on the Reeves Advisory Board. She has helped guide new programs, new initiatives for global education. She joined the REI board in uh, 2014, where it allows her to be very close to her connection with the outdoors. One way that Sharon, I know, has made significant contributions to the REI board is her experience in, in, in understanding changes in uh, accounting rules. And Sharon can educate the board uh, on that and the uh, Finance and Audit Committee because the rest of them are operators. I think Sharon is exceedingly deserving of this award. She has had an exemplary career. She models women's leadership and professional excellence. Um, she's also civically engaged. She really is committed to giving back, committed to enhancing the lives of others, and at William & Mary, I mean, I could go on and on. She really has contributed so much here. Sharon, I'm so, I'm so glad for you and so proud of you and so happy for you that you're receiving this award because I think you deserve it with all my heart. I think you deserve it. I sincerely congratulate you. I just want to let you know how proud I am of you, how proud all of your former partners at Ernst & Young are how proud my board at the Washington Society of CPAs is going to be. Congratulations. You're together with us in enhancing the learning of our students, in building bridges across cultures, and in fostering understanding. Congratulations and thank you. Gracias, Sharon. Tu eres una estrella que brilla, que ilumina y que nos guía siempre. Greetings from Tucson, Arizona, where we are enjoying some winter sun. It feels very odd to be recording this from home, but it does give me the opportunity to do my own version of a fireside chat. Wing and Mary holds a very special place for me, and I'm honored to receive this award. I want to thank the Alumni Association, those who nominated me, wrote recommendation letters, and did the video interviews. 
especially Barbara Glassell, Carol Diamondstein, Steve Hansen, Rich Jones, Sylvia Tendesiars, and Anne-Marie Stock. Thank you. Also, I'd like to congratulate the other recipients. I grew up in a relatively small town in Virginia, and William and Mary really opened my eyes to the world and to opportunities. I had a great experience on campus, which started with meeting a group of amazing women on our freshman hall at Barrett Third West. Those friendships and shared experiences really set the tone for my time at William and Mary. There are two areas that are most important to me in giving back to the university. The first is international. Living and working in Argentina was a life-changing experience for me, and having the opportunity now to lead the advisory board of the Reeves Center and Global Research Institute is very fulfilling. The faculty, staff, and board have such a passion for the global mission at William & Mary and ensuring that all students have these opportunities, which is so important in today's world. It's a pleasure to work with all of you. Likewise, getting to know the faculty and students in the Hispanic Studies Department through the endowment I set up has been one of the best experiences. Sylvia, Anne Marie, and all the Hispanic Studies faculty have done amazing things over the years. I appreciate your friendship and the care and diligence you employ with the endowment. I'm always so impressed with your projects and your creativity. It makes me want to be a student again. The second important area for me is providing financial assistance to deserving students from Southwest Virginia, where I grew up. To that end, I established a scholarship fund in honor of my mom, Pat, who passed away last year. She absolutely loved William and Mary and its profound impact on my life. I know my dad, Lonnie Philpott, will be watching this video. Dad, how you and mom have lived your life continues to inspire me every day. Thank you for the love, guidance, and support. And last but not least, I want to thank my husband, Steve Finn, for his love, support, and all the fun adventures of the past 30 plus years. I hope everyone has a safe 2021, and I look forward to getting back to campus soon. Thank you. Sharon, thank you for your compassionate and enthusiastic service to your alma mater. Next, we will honor the life of B. McLeod, class of 1983 and MBA, class of 1991. first met B when um, I joined the University Library's board. She was the chair at that time. So my first, um, my first impression of her was she was a dynamo, she was a strong leader, she was engaging, she cared about William and Mary. She just has a, that kind of dynamic personality that draws people to her. She's brilliant. I mean, there's just no question about it. The woman knows so much about everything. She came to William and Mary at 16. Um, which, which says a lot. She was a, you know, a dancer through her childhood. She was a runner and she was excellent in both. She's a woman of many accomplishments. B worked for Landmark Media. So there were a lot of smart people early on in that business and B was one of them. And so she went to go work with Cox and she was working on some pretty high level stuff, you know, major projects around infrastructure, you know, think about the 90s and the tech boom. I tend to see her more successful after retirement when she could devote herself to the community and devote herself to the people and places she loved here. She gave a lot to Puppies Behind Bars. She was also a part of the Road Runners of America. The Botanical Garden was very special to her. Her and Goody were married here. A nine-year board member, chair of the search committee. Uh, she was the board secretary, so she was an officer. B. McLeod was everywhere. I mean, her love for William & Mary was palpable. She was ever present, and not just there, but there in a meaningful way. Whether it was her volunteer work on the Libraries Board, the Foundation Board, the Society of 1918, the Campaign Steering Committee, and professorships, scholarships. She wanted to be a part of the team that was pushing William & Mary into our future. B was is always willing to step up and make a difference when she when it's something she believes in, um, and one of her passions was students, faculty, and staff well-being. Her investment in the Integrative Wellness Center as a facility and all the programs that are housed in this space, um, but also making sure that students can participate in fitness and wellness programs at no cost in perpetuity. 
I mean, the breadth of that gift is it's phenomenal and it speaks very much to her motivation. You know, there's just times when people come into your life and B was one of those people that I just had an immediate connection with, um, but we were just great friends and it just, it just one of those people you wanna keep in your life as long as you, as long as you can. It's still surreal. She was such a force in so many people's lives. I know she knows, I know she's here. I know her spirit is around us. Um, but it's just that, that selfishness that for me, I just wanna call and talk to you. And, and you know, but she would not want us to be miserable. She would not want us to be unhappy. She would hate all of this that we're talking about her. B, congratulations. I can't think of anyone more deserving than you of this alumni medallion. It was so clear, your love for William and Mary throughout your life. And you will be remembered by William and Mary for all time coming. B, I know you can hear me. You will always be a part of me. You are here at Norfolk Botanical Garden. Um, I owe so much of my personal professional life to you. Congratulations on this award. Love you. Always will love you. You are always here and you are always with me. So B, although you've passed, I want to say congratulations to you and to all those whose lives you have touched at William & Mary. Um, I am one of those people, I know I am a better person because you have been in my life. Um, and I know many people would say the same thing. So I wanna congratulate you um, for that. And I would like to share just two small quotes that I saw that I thought were really important to just honor you through this award and to say thank you. Maya Angelou said, I have found that among its other benefits, giving liberates the soul of the giver. Um, and you always gave and you continue to give even though you're no longer with us. And the other quote I saw that I thought was really special was from Henry Ward Beecher. And it says, every charitable act is a stepping stone towards heaven. So B, I know you're in heaven. B, you are loved, you are missed, but you will never be forgotten. Congratulations. I want to thank Marilyn Mignette and the Alumni Association for this award and Peter Atwater for nominating B. Also, Linda, Ginger, and Michael for their kind words. B came to William and Mary when she was 16 years old, and little did she know she would find the love of her life. From the university, to her classmates, to her fellow Chi Omegas, she loved them all. B loved William and Mary. She was always proud to say that she both graduated and got her MBA from here. She always credited her success as a businesswoman from her education she received. She spoke kindly about her professors, especially Hank Malou, Waukee Davisher, and Larry Ring, who she never got more than a B from. The education B received gave her the knowledge and leadership skills and the tenacity to excel in corporate America. She had a successful careers at Landmark Communications and Cox Communications. Her skills helped the Roadrunners Club of America from the brink of bankruptcy to being, becoming financially strong while serving as their president. She led a successful search for the new president and CEO of the Norfolk Botanical Garden. B was an active member of the Society of 1918, the For the Bold campaign, and she served as president of the Swim Library Board of Directors. She also was a member of the William & Mary Foundation Board and was serving as the Sir Secretary when she passed away. B was like a diamond. She had so many wonderful facets that made her shine and sparkle. She was always willing to be an active member 
of committees and boards, not just at William & Mary, but also in the community. When we were first together, I asked her why she was on so many committees and boards. And she said, because she liked them and she was good at it. And I thought, I didn't tell her this, but I thought, I think it's just a little egotistical. Then I sat in on one of her board meetings one time and she was good. It was a fact. She was good at board service. B was also philanthropic giving generously to organizations she cared deeply about. One of her proudest contributions was to the wellness of the students at William and Mary at the McLeod Tyler Wellness Center. Students can go there to get counseling, do yoga, meditate, or be treated for a cold. Not knowing why a student is going to the center removes the stigma, stigma of going there. Only the student knows why they are going into that building. B was an excellent athlete. In high school, she ran track, but her high school did not have a girls cross country team. So she ran on the boys team. B also ran over 70 marathons. She complete, competed in the United States uh, Women's Olympic Marathon Trials. She won several marathons in her running career. She competed in the World Duathlon Championship in Calais, France, and did the Ironman Triathlon in Lake Placid. Sorry to say, she beat me by over 90 minutes. She also did multiple other sporting events across the country and was very successful in all of them. She also was a very accomplished Scottish Highland dancer, competing at the World Championship in Scotland. A lot of her classmates can remember her dancing, practicing her dancing in the, in the resident hall. B was a leader, a role model, a mentor, To so many women and men, she showed them that they could succeed if they believed in themselves. Her drive to be the best and expect the best from others made her the woman we all knew and loved. She could be tough, but she was never mean. Trust me, I know. <laughs> Sometimes I push those buttons. <laughs> Receiving the alumni medallion would have meant the world to her. I can see her smile now. She loved coming to the annual ceremony and always was especially happy when she personally knew one of the recipients. It is a great honor for me to accept this award on her behalf. Again, I wanna thank everyone for this honor. I know we are not together, and that you are watching from afar, but so is B, just a little bit farther. And just like I know, I will see all of you again one day. I know I will see B. Thank you. Thank you so much for that wonderful tribute to Bea Goody. We all miss her dearly and are so thankful you were with us today to accept her award. And our sincere thanks to each of our awardees for their loyal and dedicated service to their communities, their professions, and our alma mater. Thank you for all you do for your alumni community. It is our honor to present you with our highest award today. I hope that next year we will be able to gather once again in person for this special ceremony. I look forward to the many events to come in our beautiful, newly expanded alumni house. Until we meet again, I wish you all good health and happiness.